All right, we're gonna go over the whisker pole now. Okay. Uh -huh. Whisker pole stored on the mast. On the mast, the whisker pole storage. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a little bit of a company version of how we do it. Okay. So it has the four spar whisker pole, the shaper track, and it has the Harkin blocks. And on this side, it has the Harkin cleat. Mm -hmm. And the blue line that controls the car that travels up and down on the track. Now, the solid red line is your topping lift. I have that stored out on the bow. Okay. I always like that when I'm done sailing, I take all the halyards, regardless of whether it's one I was using or not, and take it away from the mast and I clip it out. Oh, so I'm banging around and... There's a couple reasons for it. One is, yes, it's not banging around. The other one is, you're like, oh, I forgot that we even had that halyard. Mm. And the worst thing for halyards and anything really is to not use the stuff. Sure. So if it just sits at the top of the ship and stays like this forever while the salt and sun makes its How it's gonna infestation live. on it, uh, it's going to create a memory. It's eventually going to wear. It's going to break. One day okay. you're going to have a halyard plummeting down to the deck. Right so currently they do not have a spinnaker uh, that they're going to be using. Would a good practice be to like just tie a runner line to that and pull it up and down every now and then? Or That's not a bad idea, but at least take it out to the pulpit yep. when you're done sailing. Yep. And before you go sailing, unclip it and take it away so it's not interfering with the first Yeah, good idea. And even those few times, we'll move it a little bit and sure. show the sailor, oh yeah, I have one of these. Yeah, okay. And just because you have a spinnaker halyard, it gets its name because it, where it comes out of the mast. Okay. Whether you fly a spinnaker from or not is really irrelevant. You're just hoisting your dinghy with it. <laughs> this halyard is very good for specifically, like you said, hoisting your halyard. Yep. You know, putting groceries on the boat. It's a service yep. halyard because it goes... Man overboard type man thing. Overboard, yep. Exactly. It has access to all points of the boat, even back aft, because it's the highest right. on the yep. system. Yep. Anyways, back to the topping lift and the pole control, mm -hmm. or the pole hoist. Um, so this is going to clip onto the whisker pole that's on the mast. Two points, uh, two ways you can lift this. Uh, one is a heavy air bridle, which I recommend that you use a heavy air bridle. You'll see that in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, and that's good for, you know, once the breeze starts getting, I'd say probably over 15. Okay. Uh, you have to remember when you're going downwind, it's quite a reduction in a bridle. Right, okay. So that means you feel less wind and so does the boat. Right. So there's less load. Yep. So once you get, you can, you know, have some slack with that 15 rule, but make a rule so mm -hmm. that you say, hey, we need the heavier bridle. Right. Because we want to fly the pole because we're going downwind today and it's blowing steady 18 plus. Is there any reason why you wouldn't just always use the heavy bridle? You could always use it. It's just another piece that you have to pull out and get used. Got it. Okay. This is going to be the tutorial without it. Okay. And it's just going to be a much quicker way. Okay. So this is the lifting ring that force car equips onto their poles. Mm -hmm. It only is attached. You notice there's two poles, one smaller one, one bigger one and so it can telescope inside of it. Sure. Um, this one is attached to the big pole. So you're just going to attach this to it and you're going to come over here and you're going to take the slack out of the system. Okay. You don't have to pull it tight okay. but you don't always want it super loose either. Take a little slack out okay. and clean it. Got it. Then you're going to come and you're going to undo the trigger down inside here. You'll see a plunger pin. Mm -hmm. When I pull on this little string that should track that. Yep. And you can feel it click into place. Yeah. And that activates a little trigger arm right here. Yep. Where I can plunge it again. Okay. But we're going to leave it locked open for right now. So now I kind of push this out and you're going to come over to this side. I'm watching. I'm going to push this out a little bit with my hand and I'm going to come here and make sure I'm unfaded here. This is the down. Mm -hmm. This is the lift. Now, as this pole is going to come down, you're going to see, and you're going to want to step back over here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, yep. You're going to see now the topping lift, because it's cleated, starts mm -hmm. taking care of leveling out the pole. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you have to pull down on the car okay. to get it to start doing its thing. And you can see it's already starting to try to level out. Okay. I stop at the lifelines. One of the things we forgot to mention, before you do any of this, furl the head sail away. Okay. So you can come up here in peace. Sure. Right? The main can be over here doing its thing. You're still going downwind. Yep. But the head sail's furled away, so you're kind of safe and peaceful sure. and no one's stressed out. And you're going to be like, what did their rigger say again? What was the order of operation? <laughs> but it was topping lift on first, take the slack out, then lower the, start lowering the pole using the pole, the butt hoist system or the pole control system. Okay. Now you see I got it floating over here near the lifeline. Of course you're underway. 
it has a rubber buffer up there, so it kind of dampens the effect of how wildly it'll swing. Okay. It's a pretty stiff piece of rubber. But anyway, so you know, you kind of might have to control it a little bit, depending on how rough and rolly the seas are. Okay. So you're going to come over here and you grab the sheet that's on the furled away sail. Correct. So you have some keys, and you're going to come in here and you're going to clip this into there, and it's going to trigger down. Okay. Done. Copy. Yep. Yep. Then I'm going to return back to the pole control system, and I'm going to continue to make the pole horizontal. Mm -hmm. Right about horizontal is where you want it. Then I'll cleat it here, and then I'll pull down on it, I'll pull against that. Okay. Right? Yeah, so it's coming through that cleat, yep. and then that one's... And now that's locked itself in there, and it can't go up or down. Okay. All right, so now you're going to have to come over on this side again, and do the camera dance. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Then here you have the pole in and out control line. Okay. You'll see the pole line, control line goes all the way to the end of the pole. That is the direction you pull when you want to retrieve it. Okay. You see it also comes out of here. Yep. This is where you want to pull in order to try to extend it. So I'm going to just pull straight out this and you'll look at the end there. Now, it has a range of adjustment. You're, it's based on how big your head sole is. Mm -hmm. So you might not need to pull it out every time all the way. If your head sole is only so small, I think you guys have pretty short foot dimension in these sails. Okay. So you might not even go out this far. Sure. But so you can take a look here. The important thing about this is when I am pulling from here, I need to cleat in this direction. Yep. And if you look here closely, oh, yeah. you'll see a little jammer in there. Oh, that's really See that little jammer there? Yep. And I can take it right through there and pinch it. Nice. And that kind of locks it. And then if you want to just do one more single sure. locker offer over the top of that, that should be good to go. Excellent. Now you'll see this has slack in it, and that's okay. Slack is okay for this guy. Yeah, when the okay. pole is out. Sure. When, pole, now, when the pole is now out. Now you would come back to the cockpit, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. someone would release the furling line. You can zoom back up here, and then you will furl the jib yep. out to, or unfurl the jib, out to the end of the pole. Sure, yep. Right, until it's yep. out. The and nice thing is you can run this reef. So if you're, nice. just like, you're like, nope, that's enough, like the boat's cooking, Yeah. lock Stop off the there. furling line, and that's enough. So you just can have a little piece out. Nice. You know, And like I said, you might have to adjust your pole length to get that all to work right. Okay. Um, That's part of the fun. Spot of, from using it, and I would recommend you can get on there with sharpies and make marks on lines so you know where that mark is and this is how far out the pole goes for our chip. Got it. Yeah. Cool. So take it back down in reverse. We're going to furl the head sail away. Okay. Head yeah. sail goes away. Pole just stays like this. Yep. Pull the head sail's gone. Now it's nice and peaceful. And then you can come back up here. And we're gonna go. Well, we want to. First, we're gonna retract the pole. That's right. It's dummy. So this part's pretty easy. Now I'm just going to pull from here mm -hmm. to pull the line back into it. Now this is very op very important because if you don't cleat this in the right direction, when you go make the pull vertical, mm -hmm. the Boom. thing will come sliding out yeah. of there and you'll be disappointed. So this time we want to cleat against that end. That makes sense. Yep. All right, so now pulls back in. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to raise the pole up, and you'll see. I have never the whole time adjusted the topping lift. Okay. If you notice, the topping lift just was set one time. How about when that happens? So there was no real wrestling of the pole. I'm going to keep pulling this up. Ta da! I'm going to come up here and I'll pull my little trip line again. And now I can drop this out of it. Take that up, yep. I'm going to leave the jaw locked open. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to push this down a little bit. Okay. As far down as it'll go. This one's kind of getting trapped on the cheek block, but it'll work. Nah. But now, now I kind of have to like guide it onto there. It should have released. It should have released. So you see it's locked on mm -hmm. there. Yep. So when you smash it into there, it'll lock on there. Perfect. Now here's the last little tip. You can see the gap here. Yep. And you're going to watch as I pull up on the pole. Keep looking right there. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, nice. It's Snug. It sucks in tight against the mast. And that was pulling the blue line up. up. So I pulled the car up, raised the pull up, and brought this whole thing up and closer to the mast. Nice. And then I pull down against this just to make sure it's locked off. Excellent. And then the last step, I'd take this. It's the part yep. everybody gets lazy on. Yep. Remember, we want to stow our lines out and away. Out and away. Yep. That way you remember you have them. Remember you have them, they're getting used, they're getting like used and abused. Yeah. Yep. A lot of used.